Hi everybody, welcome. Tammy from Tammy's Homesteading Crafts. Today we're in the kitchen and we are doing a preserving video. If that is something that interests you, stick around. So before we get started, I just want to welcome all of you to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. For those of you who've been here from the beginning, I really appreciate you liking, subscribing, and commenting to my channel. It does benefit me by you doing all of those things. For those of you who this might be the very first video you're watching, welcome and I hope you enjoy the content. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. It does benefit me by, by you subscribing to my channel and it does not cost anything to, to subscribe to a YouTube channel. Also, by you subscribing, liking, and commenting on my video, it allows YouTube to share my content with other people who are looking for this, my videos to, with other people who are looking for this type of content. Okay, so thank you so much and let's get into our video. Okay, so today's video we are going to be doing um, a preserving video and I am going to be making strawberry pineapple jam. Um, I have frozen strawberries in the freezer that I got out last night and also some uh, frozen pineapple puree that I had um, used. I actually made pineapple juice a, a year or so ago and I had... Um, when I extracted all the juice, I had the pulp left and it was very flavorful. So I saved it into little pucks in um, the freezer so that I could use it into breads and stuff like that because it still had a lot of flavor into it, it just had no more juice. Um, so that's what I'm using with my strawberries that I had in the freezer. So I have pineapples and strawberries out of the freezer. Now the recipe that I'm using is not really, I'm kind of making up my own recipe on this because the recipes that I found did not, I didn't like the ingredients that they had. I just really wanted strawberries, pineapple, and possibly some lemon juice and I am also using um, powdered pectin because I have some of that and I want to use it before it goes bad. So the recipe that I'm kind of following is a strawberry rhubarb recipe that uses powdered pectin. Because the recipe for pineapple, pineapple jam, you have to use lemon, lemons or lemon juice. And when you do a strawberry rhubarb, you use a lemon juice. Now, you don't use any lemon juice when you're doing a just regular strawberry jam. So I figured that was my closest one to be able to have the exact same ingredients in it. Um, and so that's why I chose to do the strawberry rhubarb, just substituting um, the pineapple for the rhubarb. I will put my... Mm, recipe if I could think what I was gonna say I'll put my recipe down below so that you guys can see what all I I'm using and then um, we'll go from there but let me show you what I'm doing um, and get it all put together and then we will cook it I will not show you the full processing time of it because that's in another video and I'll link that down below on how to prepare it, get it in the jars. I'm just going to show you how I mix it up and get it ready to put into the jars and then we will. Sh I'll show you what it looks like finished and maybe we'll even taste it. We'll see what's going on. Hopefully they all seal. Oh, one other thing that I wanted to say, when you are doing jams with any kind of, uh, especially with powdered or liquid pectin, it might fail a little bit with just regular sugar but the most you can do when you're doing I know for sure it fails when you're doing powdered and liquid pectin if you do more than a double batch it does not set it will not firm up like it's supposed to with um, a double batch or a triple batch so I'm going to try to do I think I got enough fruit out to do a double batch of fruit also when you are doing pectin read how it tells you to measure the fruit. Usually they will give you a fresh fruit and then a crushed. Um, I'm gonna be going by the crushed because it is in the freezer. If it only gave me fresh, when I froze it, I usually write on how many cups it is when it's frozen. Because once they thaw, you can no longer judge how much you have. Um, so usually I will test it um, 
if I'm doing, I will write it down when I freeze it. So if I'm doing whole berries, I'll write down how many cups of whole berries I have in my bag. That way, if the recipe does call for just fresh berries, you know how many you have and you don't add more fruit and it not set. So you've got to have the consistency of the amount of fruit and the amount of pectin sugar to go with it. Now, I usually do a lot of most of my jams that I do, I do, don't use pectin. Somewhere along the line, I got a bunch of pectin, so I've been doing a lot of pectin in my jams, but I, there for a while, I was not doing it, and my, let me get my book here. The canning book that I use has a lot of recipes inside this, and I'll link this down below. It is in, um, you can get it from, uh, used to be able to get it from Amazon. So if I can find it, I will put the link down below in Amazon where you can find it. But um, it has a lot of recipes for just using sugar. And then, um, then your liquid pectin and your powdered pectin. So I used to do this by being able to just uh, do the uh, sugar, not doing uh, powdered pectin. But let me show you how I, I've got everything uh, laid out here and I will take you through the process of getting it ready to cook up and get it ready into my jars. So the first thing I'll do is get my canning jars washed and get them into uh, my sink full of as hot a water as my faucet will give me and let them sit here and stay warm. That way I don't have to worry about the jars at all. Also, um, you used to have to boil your seals. You no longer have to boil your seals. You just want to rinse them off. So usually I'll dump them, excuse me, into this water here and let them just sit into this fresh water. I've filled every jar with water and the, and the water goes above the jars so that they'll just stand up and sit there with water. When I'm ready to use the jars, I'll just pull them out and drain them onto my towel, let them drain upside down, and then fill them since I'm using a powdered pectin recipe, my recipe here for the strawberry rhubarb jam, it calls for two cups of crushed hulled strawberries and two cups of chopped rhubarb. And then four tablespoons of lemon juice plus my package of uh, powdered pectin and five and a half cups of sugar. This is the recipe I'm going with. I am just going to substitute the, oops, <laughs> I'm looking and my camera went up. Sorry, substitute the pineapple for the rhubarb. So I'm going to get that sectioned off and put that in my pot. And then um, for doing your, the directions are up here for all of these. Um, okay, it tells you to uh, whisk your pectin until dissolved, bring to a boil, over high heat, stirring frequently. Add the sugar all at once and continue. Return to full rolling boil, stirring constantly. Boil hard, stirring for constantly for one minute. So what I usually do in order to get the uh, pectin to dissolve, a lot of times I'll put a little bit of sugar into it. Um, I'm probably not going to because it doesn't tell me to. Some of the recipes tell you to add it to a cup of sugar so that it will stir in easier. Hopefully this will stir in all by itself, but I'm going to put it all into a pan and stir this in and then bring it to a boil. So it'll all be cold. Hopefully it'll stir in pretty good and I'll be able to get that going. But I will, uh, like I said, you guys know I don't know how to time lapse. So I will just kind of uh, show you each step as I go what I'm going to be doing. But this is all the fruit that I got out of the freezer last night. So this was four, whoops, four cups of whole strawberries. So I think when I put it into the um, my cup, it'll be like two cups of strawberries. And then I got another one here. So I just need four cups because I'm going to do two batches. And then here are my pineapple chunks. I have a couple of bags of them. Hopefully I have enough of that out. If not, we don't have it out. I... Um, it's too late now to try to get it to thaw, um, but that's what we have out, and we'll see where we, we go at that point in time. But I have a four-cup measuring, so I'm going to pour it in and see what I get. 
So I get my four cups. I have a pot over here ready to put all that stuff in. I also, you want to make sure you do get all of your sugar ready. So a lot of times I will go through and I will put all of my sugar into a bowl so that it's ready to go and I can just dump it in. So let me get all that going and then I will show you what it looks like. One of the other things you want to do since it's not going to take all that long to cook up the jam once you get it going to a boil, you want to put your uh, water bath canner on and get it to start getting the water warm. I usually just put it on like one or two, fill it with warm water, and allow it to start um, getting hot. If it seems to be getting too hot, I'll turn it down and just put the lid on it and let it keep warm. This just allows you to put the jars in there and not have to worry about them um, you know, taking forever or letting it try to get up to heat since your jars are hot and your jam going in the jars are hot you want to keep the everything in that consistency so that it's hot you really don't want it to boil but you want it to be warm so that when you put everything together and you put the lid on it it doesn't take that long to bring it up to a boil because you got to process this in a water bath for about uh, 15 minutes I believe I'll look to make sure and I will make sure that it says down below when I edit to do that. But yeah, I get my water, my canner on the stove and let it get going for heating up. Okay, so I have my strawberries and pineapple and lemon juice all in here. I'm just mixing it up good. Um, I might take my immersion blender and puree the strawberries just so that they're a little bit smaller. Um, I want them crushed a little bit more. They're soft, so it won't take too long. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so that, that looks better. There's a few lumps in there, which I'm okay with, and they will break down a little bit, but there wasn't so much lump um, in there. So now all I have to do is add my two things of pectin and whisk this and get it nice and dissolved, then uh, put it on the burner and bring it up to a boil. It's cold right now, so it's going to take a little bit to bring it up to a boil, but I'll show you when it's boiling, and then we can add the sugar. There we go. Okay, the pectin is added and all stirred in, and we are, we've got the heat on um, medium, and we're going to let it come to a boil here so that we can have this going. Like I said, I have my canner on the burner back here, just trying to get this to um, get warm so that I have everything going. My sugar is in a container here so that when it's ready, I can bring it in. I'm going to put a whisk through that and break up all of the chunks so that there is no chunks when I pour it into that and it'll stir in and dissolve really quickly. But that's where we're at. I'm uh, gonna get this to a boil. Once this starts to get warm and get closer to a boil, you want to stir this because of the pectin, it will get thick and it could um, definitely get really um, thick and chunky. So you want to make sure that you have this uh, going and get that uh, stirred in. Allow it to get whole, get to a boil, and it might get a little thinner. And when you turn, put the sugar into it, it definitely will get a little bit thinner before it gets thicker. Um, but it'll turn clear. So let's look at that in a little bit. When it starts to boil, you want to be stirring it so that it will not stick to the bottom of your pan. You want to make sure that you can allow it to... Oh, why is that not... There we go. It wasn't focusing. Um, you want to be able to make sure that it, it doesn't stick. You don't want it to burn and have a uh, burnt tasting uh, jam. But it's just now starting to bubble a little bit, as you can see right there. Ow, got burnt. But I need to bring it to a boil so that it is boiling, and, I'll f and then I can add my... Um, sugar into it. I will pull it off the heat to add the sugar into it so that it doesn't keep boiling and splat out of the pot and burn me. Um, 
I've had uh, second degree burns from sugar content on my on on me, so I I don't want to do that again today. So that's where we're at. Um, but yeah, it's almost ready to start adding. If I stop and it starts bubbling right away, it's almost there. So I will keep stirring and then I will show you what it looks like when I get all the sugar into it. You want to make sure you get all the sugar in mixed in well while it is off the burner. And as you can see how thin the sugar made this. Um, and it cooled it down quite a bit because it was boiling when I pulled it off. Um, so now we got to bring it back to a boil and we got to let it boil for one minute. It won't take long because it is still pretty relatively hot. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that it is come to a full boil and make sure that you have everything ready that you need for um, getting this put into your jars. Your jars, of course, are clean and waiting for you. Your lids are there, your seals are there, um, the rings. Just make sure that you have everything ready so that when it starts, when it boils and you're done with that minute, um, that you can get right into putting it into the jars. Okay, so let's see. It's not boiling yet. Usually it'll get really, really foamy when it starts to boil for that one minute. But um, let me put you, turn you off here. I will get everything cleaned up with the sugar and everything and be ready to get this into the jars. So when you guys are dealing with uh, jams and boiling uh, sugar content, be really, really careful. That popped out, where's my thumb? And it's blistering up right there. Um, it popped out and got onto my thumb while I was doing that and it's now starting to blister up a little bit. So be very careful. Uh, sugar content can get very, very hot and you can get seriously um, some good serious burns to doing that. They tell you a size pot. I usually go bigger so that it doesn't overflow that pot um, because it will rise up with all the sugar when it starts uh, foaming and everything. But just be very, very careful when you are do dealing with sugar. Nobody needs to go to the emergency room and end up having to be dealed with, dealt with um, a third degree burn because, you know, they kept stirring and it just, and it was boiling over and they got uh, burnt. So be very careful. Having made a lot of jams, I know that I'm getting close to this starting to boil because it's getting really thin and when you stir it, it gets really, it's almost clear and there's getting quite a bit of foam on it. It's going to start boiling here any minute and when it boils, it's going to boil hard for one full minute. But it does need to be a boil that you cannot stir out. So if it starts to bubble a little bit, you can't just say, oh, let's do that for a minute. You've got to have a full rolling boil that you, when you stir, it's still bubbling up. And we're not there yet. I mean, it is very hot. Let me tell you that. And a lot of people go buy um, a thermometer and they will put a thermometer. Now, your thermometer will tell you jelly or um, jam consistency on the thermometer instead of candy. You know what temp to have it at for a minute. But, um, yeah, you just want to make sure that you're stirring it so that it does not stick on the bottom of your pot and that it will um, be ready to go. But, yeah, as you can see, we still have some chunks of strawberries, and I don't mind having a few chunks of strawberries in jam that I have. That I don't mind at all. Um, some of them are kind of whole. They didn't break down hardly at all, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, we're getting there where it is starting to thicken to the point that it's going to start to boil a little bit. And when it starts to boil a little bit, it won't take long that it will be boiling, full boiling, um, rather quickly after that. But now when you, if you weren't using pectin and you put the sugar in right off the bat, because... Um, 
you put the sugar in when it's cold and then you heat it all up and you start cooking it and it'll go really translucent and you have to cook it with the sugar in it while it's a full rolling boil for like five I believe it's like five or six minutes to get it to the thickness that you need for jam it's got to stand on your spoon it's got to gel up onto your spoon to be able to um, do all that and that's where you tend to get burnt pretty easily with uh, doing jams and that's where I got burnt a lot of times because you're stirring and you have to constantly stir it you can't just let it go otherwise it'll burn so you're constantly stirring it I ended up having to put a glove on and um, long sleeve shirt on my arm there that it was over top that I was stirring with because it kept bubbling out and hitting it even got me in the face the one time so you just really have to be careful when you are doing dealing with any type of sugar uh, based things whether it's candy making or jam or jelly anything that you have to boil your sugar for a long time you really need to be careful because sugar gets really hot and you can really get burnt really quickly Okay, so I will show you, hopefully, when it is boiling, what it looks like. So this is what I meant by getting really foamy before it starts to boil. It just now started to boil. So as long as it keeps boiling like this and I can't stir it down. So once I'm done, I will see if I can stir it down here. If I can't stir it down, then I'm going to start the timer for one minute. But I really want it to get going boiling so that I can see and I can't stir it down. Look how it is boiling and it's still through the stir. So this is where I need to make sure I put the timer on and see how it's raising into the pot so that it doesn't overflow. Let me put you down so that I don't burn myself and I can get this going. So it raised all the way up to the top of my pot as it is boiling. And I have a minute of stirring this while it is boiling so that it will thicken. But this is why you definitely want to make sure you have a pot that is bigger than what they tell you because it will uh, absolutely go up to the top of your pot. That was my one minute, so I am done stirring and I will pull it off. So I have it all in the jars. I just have to wipe them off. This is why I put a towel down. <laughs> because it drips all over. It overflowed over here even off uh, onto my uh, pot holders and even down to the floor. When I pulled it off the stove, it just boiled up and boiled over. Luckily, it did not get my hands or my feet as it boiled down, but that's why I use a towel along everything because it's just easier to clean up. I can just throw these in the wash machine and I don't have to worry about it. But now I just have to take my cloth, clean the tops of them, and put the seals and the rings on and get them in the, into the water bath canner. Okay, I have all of the jars that I can get into my canner and I will go from there. I still have three pint jars that would not fit and I'm just going to clean them up, put the seal on them, and put them into the refrigerator and they will be good in the refrigerator. I'll let them sit out on the counter for a little bit, but then they will be fine in the refrigerator. Actually, somebody said if you put them on, the lid on, screw it on tight, they might seal themselves, but I won't trust them to be out on the shelf at long time because it might not be a good enough seal. So we'll get these in the pressure, or er, in the water bath canner, make sure that you have water above the top of the jars, and we have to process them, process them for 10 minutes when this is boiling. So I just turn the thing up to high and hoping they will start to boil here rather soon while I finish up these. Well guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you might have learned something and maybe you'll try to do the strawberry pineapple jam. Um, I still have it in the pressure cooker in the water bath. When it comes out, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like. Uh, that'll probably be my sign-on screen for the video itself, is just the uh, picture of all of it sitting out of the pressure of the water bath canner. But um, three jars that did not seal, I have back here. Um, somebody had said a while ago, if you turn them upside down, um, they'll seal. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna let them go upside down for a little bit while those are processing in there. Flip them the other way if they don't seal, that's fine. I'll put them in the refrigerator and we'll use it um, 
in the next couple of months. It'll be fine in the refrigerator. It just will not be shelf stable as it would be if I was to water bath it. But it will stay in the refrigerator. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Have a good day. Bye.